Hey everyone, so this video is going to be the first video in the dynamic programming series. And uh, today we'll be looking at this problem from CSES. The problem name is removal game. Um, you can find this in the CSES problem set. So basically what the problem says is you will be given an array of n numbers. And there are two players who are playing on that array. Uh, so player one goes first and uh, how they are playing is so player one will either choose the first number or the last number. He'll have two options. So he'll choose one of these two. And uh, let's say if he chooses uh, the number four, this number will be given to him and uh, his, this score will be added to player one. This four score will be added to player one. And this number will be removed. Now it's the turn of a second player. So second player again will have two options. He can either choose a five or a three. So let's say uh, player two chooses this number. So this number is again removed. So player two will get five. And this game continues as long as there is some number in the uh, array. So at the end, we have to tell what is the maximum possible score uh, player one can get if they both are playing optimally. Now this optimally part is important because uh, they both are trying to maximize their individual scores. Right, so they will pick numbers in such an order that uh, their score is maximized, which is also equivalent to saying the other player's score is minimized. They both are one and the same thing. Uh, since every number either belong to the first player or the second player, so uh, if I can minimize other players score that it means that I got some, uh, you know, larger value and my score is increased. Cool. So, uh, like the very first intuition in this problem is greedy that, uh, how, so, so you should always choose the number greater, uh, from the two available options. So if we take this example, four, five, one, three. So we'll have this array and we have two players, player one and player two. So if we play greedily, then the player one will choose this number four. So player one will get this number four. And now player two has five and three options. So player two will choose five because it was greater. And now again, uh, player uh, one will choose three and uh, player two will have another option, but to choose one. So the score player one got was sum of all these numbers, which is seven and player two got was six. Um, but, uh, but player one could have been better had he chosen, uh, in the beginning, had he started with number three. So let's see. So if player one had chosen three, uh, now player two has two choices, either four or either one. Uh, like he can choose anything. If he choose even four, then player one can in next turn choose five and he'll have no other option but to choose one. So player one could have got a score of seven, which is greater than, uh, which is eight, which is greater than seven, uh, which you are getting when you're doing the greedy approach. So this is where greedy fails. Um, so you cannot do that greedy approach of choosing the maximum element every time from the two, op two available options. Uh, now, since uh, grid is failing, so this gives us an opportunity to explore the DP, DP option. Now, how do we do that? Uh, so we can think of a, so before uh, we go to DP, we'll, let's say, um, quickly look at the constraints. So your array size is 5000. So you, if you think about this, the constraints are low on the number of elements on the array. So you can have an n square approach. So this also gives you some kind of hint that you can write n square dp on this, uh, which is what exactly we're going to do here. So if we try to write a dp on this, so let's say these were the elements a1, a2, um, a3 and so on till an. So these were the numbers and uh, in every turn, um, so player one starts, player one will have, have option to choose one of these two, right? 
And then let's say he chooses this, then this is a reduced array from a1 to a n minus one. Now again, the same whole process continues. So we can have a dynamic programming on two parameters. It's a two dimensional DP. So the first parameter is actually uh, the beginning of array. It's the beginning of array. And uh, the second parameter is the end of array we are focusing on. So in this example, so, so DP of IJ is nothing. This is the maximum score uh, player one, player one can get uh, when he is playing first. He's playing first on i to j on this on this part right so our final answer would be dp of 0 to n minus 1 because this is um the initial array the initial array from 0 to n minus 1 this would be our final answer now uh, the only thing we need to do is we need to define some kind of uh, relation between this and uh, you know some recursive calls so those calls uh, will fetch you an answer and you'll have answer for this um so we'll now see how we can do that so it is this so let's say uh, we have this currently we're focusing on this part so a of i plus one a of i plus two so on so on a of j minus 3, a of j minus 2, a of j minus 1, and a of j. So this is the part we are focusing on from i to j. Right? So now, since this is the uh, turn of first player, so he'll have two options. He can choose either a of i or a of j. Right? He'll have two options. He can choose a of i or he can choose a of j. Right? So let's say he chooses a of i. In that case, uh, this is the remaining array from i plus 1 to j. Now it's the turn of second player. So what second player would do is that player will either choose i plus 1 or j and he'll choose such that the next call remaining would give me minimum answer. So what I mean by that is he'll try to minimize my score because I'm dealing with only my score so he'll try to minimize my score so he'll have two options if he chooses i plus one element this is the remaining uh remaining array so i'll have a call for dp of i plus two and j so this is uh what the remaining array would have been had, had he chosen this uh other case would be had he chosen a of j in that case my dp remaining would have been dp of i plus 1 to j minus 1. So he'll give me minimum of these two. So uh, since he has already picked one of these two, so he'll try to minimize my score of these two recursive calls. Similarly, I'll have uh, for the other case as well, when, uh, uh, when I chose a of j in the beginning, so he'll have two options. He can choose a of i, or he can choose a of j minus one. If he choose a of j, a of i, sorry, then uh, the call would be from uh, i plus one to j minus one. Uh, so this part, I'm talking about this part, right? Other case would be had he chosen this element, a of j minus one. In that case, uh, uh, the part I'll be making, uh, I'll be getting score from the first player would be dp of i j minus 2. So he'll give me minimum of these two cases, right? And since I this is my turn, I'll try to take a, a maximum of those two cases. I mean, I'll have two options either to pick the first element or the last element. And these are the explored possibilities in those two options. And since I'm playing optimally, I'll choose either one of these uh, I'll choose the one which gives me a better score. So this is how the final DP is going to look like. And uh, also we'll have some base cases. We can define some base cases. Uh, the first base case could be when your i is equal to j. 
if your i is equal to j it means there's only one element in the range and since it is the first player's turn he will get that element in that case uh, a of i would be given to the first player uh, if i equal if i plus one equal to equal to j what this means is there are two elements in the range so we can write this at this as well if j minus i equal equal one then uh, since there are two elements i a of i and j of j these two are consecutive elements i can take any one of these it's it's a first player's turn so he can take any of these two number and he'll take the maximum value he'll take maximum of those two um so yeah these two are the only base cases we need to deal and then uh, this this recursive call will calculate answer uh, for every dp of ij and our final answer would be dp of 0 to n minus 1 this is what our intention is right so we'll now look at uh, how we'll write this in code right so we so i'll just uh, use my template and uh, we are given an integer n and we'll take the input to that now we also have n numbers so now we have taken input for all the n numbers and we know that uh, the maximum number of elements is 5000 so yeah i'll define a global dp we'll declare a variable n and then declare a global dp of size n cross n initially i would want to set all the elements of dp to minus one minus one represents that uh, they haven't been calculated yet um, now my answer would be i'll write a recursive function my answer would be from 0 to n minus 1. Like if the first player is playing on this whole array, what would be my answer? So I'll also have to pass my array. And uh, this should be my answer. Uh, now we'll write this recursive function. So this has first of all an integer array. And then you'll have these two indexes L and R. Uh, first, we'll be dealing with the base cases. So our first base case was uh, when i is equal to j. Okay. So when i is equal to j, in that case, we simply return that element. Right? Uh, other case would be when uh, j minus i is equal to equal to 1. In that case, we return uh, maximum of those two elements because there were only two elements in the range i and j so we will return max of those two now since we are done with base cases we will now deal with recursive cases uh, so before that we will check if our db is already computed or not so I will make a reference for the current state which is db of lr so this the reference helps me uh, so I will not write again and again dp of lr i'll just use this reference variable so now i'll check if my answer is already computed if it's not minus one then i can simply return from here otherwise otherwise what i have to do is that would be a recursive case and uh, my answer would be max of these two conditions so that would be i'll have two options either i can pick a of i or I'll be picking A of J. So when I pick A of I, the other player will give me min of those two cases. And the cases are recursive of A of I plus 2 comma J, if you have chosen I plus 1. And the uh, other case would be from I plus 1 to J minus 1. Uh, we'll also be passing A here. So this is the first condition. This is the first condition. And then the Similarly, for the other part as well, we'll make two calls, one from um, from i to j minus 2, had he been chosen j minus 1, in that case, 
the range would reduce to i to j minus 1 and the uh, other one would be had he chosen a of i so that would be a of i plus 1 comma j minus 1 i'll just move it to the next line just so that it's more clear now and uh, finally we return this answer since it's computed and since it was a reference this will now be stored in this uh, db array right so i can try to run it now it looks good okay so we have some compilation issue okay it's not i it's l and r uh will this would be r this is l and r This is again L, this is R. Okay, um, I think only just thing is left. Okay, let's see if this compiles now. Okay, we need to change this as well. Um, if R minus L is one, then yeah, should be good now. Okay, this is also L. Cool. So, so yes, eight I think is the correct answer. So it's working. Uh, we will try to make a submission for this. Okay. So got accepted. Um, so. So this was basically a two dimensional DP, and uh, we'll make. Uh, two different recursive calls. So we'll have two options and we'll make two recursive calls in each option. Um, so I hope this is clear. Um, so it's the first video in the series and uh, if you have any suggestions or uh, any feedback on this, please do put that in the comment section. Um, hope to see you in the next video. Thanks.